Hi everyone, welcome back to online classroom Jeku Tio. Today we are going to look at pressure. Over here, I have two situations to show you. If you try to press a thumbtack into a plank, will it work? Yes, very easily. How about if you try to press a coin into a plank? Well, it probably won't go so well with you. The coin will not go into the plank. Why? This is because the effects of force acting on a surface er on a surface depends on the surface area. What do I mean? If the force is applied on a very small surface area like this thumbtack is just a dot, then it will experience a very huge or large pressure. But if the same amount of force is applied on a coin which has a much bigger surface area, all right, then the pressure that is experienced will be much, much smaller, which means if the surface area is big, the pressure experienced will be small. And if the surface area is small, the pressure experienced will be big. They are the other way around, okay? So with that in mind, what is the meaning of pressure? Pressure has the definition force per unit area, the force that is applied on one unit area. And the direction of the force has to be perpendicular to the surface area. If you remember, perpendicular means 90 degrees. How do we calculate pressure? Well, you get the force divided by surface area. And remember, the force must be in Newton and surface area has to be in meter square. And the SI unit for pressure will be Pascal. All right. If you write the full word, you spell out Pascal, it has to be small letter. And if you use the symbol PA, then P needs to be in big letter. Please remember that. And one Pascal actually equals to one Newton per square meter. Well, look at that, this picture. This elephant is probably around 5,000 kilograms. Why then, if the elephant walk across this field, the elephant's leg or the elephant's feet will not sink into the ground? How about a young lady that is about 50 kilograms walk across the field with her high heels? What happened to the high heels? The high heels will probably sink into the ground and it will be very difficult for her to walk around, right? Why? Same principle, okay? Because the surface area of the elephant's sole, sole meaning the bottom part of the feet, okay? So the elephant's sole is actually very big. So the surface area is huge and hence, only small amount of pressure is exerted on the ground. But if you are wearing high heels, or even if the elephant is wearing high heels, the heel will probably sink into the ground. Okay, because the surface area will be so small that the pressure experience will be a lot bigger. Okay? Now, let's look at gas pressure. Just now we were looking at pressure as a general, as a whole. So what is gas pressure? Do we experience gas pressure? Well, I like to look at it this way. Look at the picture. If you are trying to blow a balloon, what happened to the balloon? The balloon will expand. Why? When you blow air inside the balloon, the air will push the balloon out and cause the balloon to expand and that is actually air pressure. But when you let the balloon go without tying it, what happened to the balloon? The air inside the balloon will come out. Why? because there's actually atmospheric pressure around the balloon, outside the balloon. So the atmospheric pressure applied on the balloon will cause the balloon to deflate, meaning it will force all the air inside to come out. So how do we actually explain air pressure? All right, we can explain it by using the kinetic theory of gas. And Jeku Tio likes to joke with her student. I always tell my student, all of you behave like the air molecules. You know why? Because all of you cannot stop moving. 
even when I'm teaching in the classroom, someone will be playing with their pen, another person might be looking around, while you can see on the ground, some of them are tapping the floor. Why? Because they behave just like the air molecules. Of course, that's a joke. Okay, so air molecules always move. Okay, they are always moving and they move about freely, meaning they move in all directions. Look at the picture here. All these pink color little circles, they are air molecules. Some may be moving towards the left, some may be moving towards the right, while others move up and the rest move down. They move in all directions freely. Imagine if you are the air molecules in this little container and you move around freely like that, what will happen? Of course, accident will happen. Meaning, you will collide with each other. You will knock into each other, bump into each other, and some of you will even bump into the wall, right? So same thing goes to the air molecules. The air molecules always move and they will collide with the walls of its container and even with each other. That's what the kinetic theory of gas say. So when they collide with each other, okay, when the collision happens, that means it produces a force. And that force will push against the wall of the container. And that force is called the air pressure. It's very easy to understand, right? So remember, if you want to explain about air pressure, always go back to the kinetic theory of gas. About the air molecules that move all the time and collect with each other with the uh, wall of the container and produce a force. And that force is called the air pressure. Well, there are two factors that affect air pressure. First factor, before I tell you what the factor is, can you guess from this picture and this diagram here? Well, again, imagine you are the air molecule. If you are placed in this container, container A, where you have a lot of space inside this container, and you are placed in the container B, this time your space is so much smaller. It is a lot narrower, meaning you have very little space to move. In container A and B, which one do you feel more stressed? Of course, container B, right? We want a lot of space so we can move all the time without knocking at each other. Okay, so what is the factor that affect the air pressure here? Well, space, that should give you a clue, means volume. All right, volume. Is, uh, what is the meaning of volume? Volume means the space within a container. So, if the volume increase, that means space increase, then air pressure will decrease. If the volume decrease, meaning very little space, then the air pressure will increase. How do you explain that? Go back to our kinetic theory of gas. Alright? Well, when the volume in the container is reduced, that means the air particles or the air molecules inside will collide more frequently with each other and also with the wall of container and that will result in an increase of air pressure. So when you want to explain air pressure, remember again, I repeat this many times because I want you to get it, okay? We always go back to the kinetic theory of gas. How about this one? The second factor that affects air pressure Look at container A. If you are the air molecules in container A, where the temperature is not that high, well, I put you in a container B where I light up the Bunsen burner at the bottom. Okay? The container will start getting hotter and hotter. Which one would you feel a lot more stressed? It will be container B. Alright? So the factor here is easy to guess. It is temperature. The higher the temperature, the higher the air pressure. Again, we go back to kinetic theory of gas to explain it. Okay, When the temperature increases, the air particles will move faster because they have more energy now from the heat. When they move faster, what happens? That means they will collide with the wall of the container and with each other a lot more frequently and with greater force because they move so fast. And what will that result in? That will result in the increase of air pressure. 
So two factors, number one, volume, number two, temperature. Alright, so that's all Jake Gutio is going to discuss in this video. I shall see you in the next video. Bye! If you have learned something new from this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.